Hello, stamping friends. This is Tracy Rather from Plum Crazy Stamping. It's May 31st, 2023, and we're back on track with our Wednesday evening Facebook Live. I hope that you've been enjoying this month as I've been sharing a number of ideas of how to use your paper scraps to make beautiful, simple, and quick cards. I'm going to go ahead and just quickly show the cards that we've made this month to remind you of uh, what's available so you can go back and watch videos if you like one of the cards you see today. I'm also going to review how I store all of these paper scraps, die cuts, and sentiments to keep them very close at hand so that I can make a quick card whenever I need to. So I'm going to go ahead, flip the camera down, and as I'm doing that, I'll just ask you to please sign in. Let me know who you are and where you're watching from, and please use the comments if you have any questions or any feedback. I'm very interested to know if you find um, these storage and organization ideas helpful. Once again, these are the system that I've developed over the years, and I would love to hear how you keep track of your supplies, and I'm sure everyone else would be interested as well. So let me go ahead, put the camera down here, and okay, upside down for a minute, and there we go. Let me just make sure that I catch up with the computer here. And let's take a look at the cards we've made this month. And I just need to refresh my screen here. So in week one, we just took different scraps that we had um, and put them on our cards and just added a sentiment. And we did not do anything if I can remember correctly, with the inside, except to put um, paper so that we could write a note. So here are from uh, week one. And let's see here. And we'll go to week two. We were very focused on using strips. So on this one, I had done the happy birthday on a uh, strip of white cardstock I had and then just grabbed one of my um, colored designer series paper. Here I put a sentiment on one strip and just used some secondary strips to um, accent that. Here's just a number of strips, all the same size, just measured them to the four inch card front size and then stamped one sentiment on here. Another um, just extra strips that I had, decided to kind of glue them together in a pattern and then put a sentiment there. Okay. A number of strips that I mixed up between designer series paper and plain cardstock and then did the uh, matching ink for the sentiment. Here's one that I did um, all the different blues I had, uh, a nice big sentiment, and then I decided to repeat that on the inside too just to add a little bit of interest. Here's one. Um, these strips were all from the same pack of designer series paper, but I had a number of little scraps, so just put them together and then took a square of that same paper to pop up my sentiment. And then if you'll recall, uh, this was all white strips, and I didn't quite know what to do with it because it looked, it blended together. By using a dauber, to uh, color this in, it did uh, provide a number of, um, I guess it, it provided enough interest to make my sentiment and uh, die cut image pop. Here was one where I had just very little scraps, but I took a punch and punched those out. And gosh, I already made a Christmas card for the year. 
And then I uh, shared with you using adhesive sheets underneath scraps. And these were the scraps of adhesive sheets that I put glitter on after I attached them to the card front. And here's what I did with very small pieces of um, designer series paper that I mounted on adhesive sheets and then um, put the glitter on in between and I left enough room for a sentiment. Same uh, technique, just different colors. And then the next um, one was just looking through uh, designer series paper and leftover sentiments that I had. So this one I matched, I had a sentiment that matched uh, the paper, put that on there. Same here was this easy. I had a cream colored strip of paper. I just uh, put the sentiment on here and this was just a leftover scrap. And I had this paper and a striped paper and had already cut out with a die cut that I had left over the word inspire. And another one with um, I popped this whole thing up with the designer series paper. This is a die cut, and this is a die cut with a heat embossed sentiment. Just a note here, this was layering different papers that all matched, and I used the designer series paper as an inspiration. And this is a punch. And then Go To Greetings has three sets of four sentiments in different fonts and different sizes. So I just chose one of those. And then this was a matter of just sliding designer series paper and designer series paper on top of a card front, trimming the edges, and then going into my extra die cuts to find a dragonfly and a sentiment that was already punched. Let me see if anyone's signing in here. Hi, Betty. Hi, Sue. Hi, Kathy. Bonita, nice to see you, Betty. Okay, so those are just a little bit about what organizing and keeping track of my scraps was um, able to allow me to quickly make these beautiful cards. So now I want to show you a little bit about how I keep track of all of those cards. I'm sorry, the supplies for these cards to make it easy for me to do this, okay? So let me move the cards out of our way. And let's get started with first cardstock. So when I buy um, cardstock uh, from Stampin' Up, you know, it comes in a... Uh, plastic sheet here, you know, marked with the type of cardstock that it is. And I actually use a lateral filing cabinet. Now, it doesn't matter what kind of filing cabinet you use, but I have found that my hanging folders in my filing cabinet work great for keeping track of my cardstock. And it's easy for me to access. So I've then taken the. Um, uh, manila folders, I label them with the color, and then when I open a package of cardstock, the opened pieces go in the folder. Within the hanging folder, I keep whatever packets I have of uh, sealed cardstock, because this is the way that I can quickly look in my file and see um, if I need to order any cardstock. Especially when there is free shipping, that's when I love to stock up on my cardstock. Okay, and then I have in the front here, I have a 31 bag that I keep five pieces of every color of the cardstock. So when I go to stamp camp or I go to a crop or whatever, I have all the colors I need. When I kind of retire that for the couple of months that I don't do that type of activity, I put those in the front right here so that when I have to load my 31 bag back up, I can count that I have five. I load that other bag up 
and I'm ready to go. Right now I'm keeping track of these uh, by the color families that Stampin' Up! has and I keep the in color families together. I'm contemplating whether I just want to put these in alphabetical order. I do that with the retired ones. So I have one drawer that's all current and one drawer that's retired. So anyway, that's how I keep track of it when it's first new. Then as I use the cardstock, the next step I have in organizing it is I have this very large binder. Now this one is a three inch um, D ring heavy duty binder and inside here now I want to make sure that you can see this so let me just slide this a little bit I have a page protector for every color and I also have these labeled so when I put this in this binder I put one piece of the cardstock in so that I can see the color and then I will at times put a whole card base in here or a portion of cardstock. I will put all small pieces. Now this is basic black. I have a lot of small pieces of that in here. Uh, basic gray, Bermuda Bay. I'm trying to see if you can see like here's one that even has things punched out. Um, but it's all of my usable scraps. So you can see they go from very small to punched out to half pieces of cardstock, okay? So I just so happen I have fresh Phrygia here I need to put away. So I just go through by alphabet and I'll take these two pieces of fresh Phrygia and I'll keep this in here and this sits on my shelf. It travels with me when I uh, go to crops and stuff and I, I've just found this works really well. Um, Diane, hi, nice to see you. Okay, so that is another level of keeping track of this. So sometimes when I have time, the things that are enough for a card base I will actually um, take the half sheet of cardstock, whether it's this or it's the other direction, you know, where we do the 11 by uh, four and a quarter. But anyway, I will actually score this. So this is one of the ones that is um, eight and a half by uh, five and a half. So I want to score this at four and a quarter. I'm going to score this one too because I'll put these both in my next uh, set of organization. Okay, I'm just going to grab my bone folder here. So sometimes, I don't know about you, but I'll get a pile of cardstock that needs to be organized, put away. So I'll go through and do these different things that I use as storage. So this is my next level of storage. I found these acrylic, um, they're like refrigerator organizers. I got this at like Marshall's or a Tuesday morning, you know, one of those kind of stores. And so I keep in here card bases and card fronts. So my card fronts, the standard size I have is four by five and a quarter. So I'll just keep those or cut those and put them in here. I have some of the uh, die cuts that are almost a full card front in here. I have um, some embossed card fronts that I had one and I had another piece of paper, so I made two. I have a vellum that I had stamped once, so I thought I would make another one. I keep them in here. I keep the uh, card inserts um, and card fronts that are just plain white and very vanilla in here. 
Um, if I want to make a layer like for uh, basic black, I'll have it in here at um, four inches by five and a quarter, but maybe I'll cut this down a little bit or I'll cut down the next card uh, stock size that I want. But having them in these sizes makes that very easy. So you can see I have a lot of my white uh, card fronts in here. And then I have a variety of colors. I have to tell you at this point, I do not have these organized in any form or fashion. Um, when I'm doing card designs, I'll just look in here, see if I have something that works. And if I don't, I'll go and get the right color card stock out of my filing cabinet. But otherwise, this makes it easy and fast. And if nothing else, the very vanilla, the white, and the black are very basic and make it really easy. So that is another level of storage. So that's, um, oh wait, here's the last level of my regular card stock. Now this has a little bit of um, designer series paper, but mostly these strips are just colored card stock. And they're all different widths depending upon how I was cutting my card stock. But once again, to just make an accent on a card, to make a sentiment, this is so easy. And I just keep this right next to my stamping table and they're right there for me. I have another one of these that just has white and very vanilla. And in that basket, I also have smaller pieces of white and very vanilla cardstock that I use to stamp sentiments and use a punch on if I need to or just cut it with my paper trimmer. So this little basket, you know, I picked it up for, it was probably less than a dollar. I probably got either two or four of these in a packet for a dollar um, and it works great. So that's regular cardstock. Now for designer series paper, I just want to double check. Um, oh, and here's another example of having, um, when I cut out labels, I'll be showing you a little bit of this um, towards the end of this. But like if I make a card front and I decide to make two of them, I just have a paper pumpkin box that has, these are not full card front sizes, so they're in here, but I have, you know, some pine trees. You know, sometimes I just end up making two of something. I like stamping these, so I cut out the images. Um, sometimes I will put this in the stamp set itself. Sometimes it's in this kind of just extra box of things that I can look through when I am designing uh, cards. But anyway, let's go to designer series paper. So... If you've ordered from Stamping Up, you know that they come in these plastic sheets. If you turn them over, <clears throat> it not only tells you the name of the uh, designer series paper, it'll tell you how many pieces of paper so many times our 12 by 12 will come in 12 pieces, 24 pieces, 48 pieces, and they're double-sided in many uh, situations. Up here... I note which catalog it came from. So this was Celebration Spring of 2022. Also, I don't know about you, but I'm at the point where I need some glasses to see the tiny print of all the uh, coordinating card stock colors. So I just write them. As soon as I open the pack, I write them big so I don't have to try to find my glasses to figure out what colors I might want to coordinate with this. And I leave them in this package by just slitting one side of the package. And then as I'm using this 12 by 12 cardstock, until I get down to really, you know, I still have full sheets of this cardstock, you know, here in this package. And I also have partial sheets in here. And I actually have some pretty small pieces. But I will keep them all in here so that if I want to make cards and color coordinate everything, this is all in one place and I don't have to go hunting for things. So I have, 
you know, the colors of cardstock that match this. I have where I got this and if it's still available. And then I have, you know, all kinds of different pieces um, to use in my card designs. Then I keep track by year. I have these magazine holders. So this is a cardboard magazine holder. So you can get these at office supplies. I actually think this is a, oh, what's the name of it? Totally something, and it's for uh, crafting. And I keep the whole year of paper in here. And here on the spine, I will write which catalogs these papers come from. And that helps me to find what I'm looking for. So if I'm in a catalog and I see a paper, this is the way that I can find it is by looking at the front spine of these. So every year then, I keep track of the paper in that manner. Just want to check if anybody has any questions. I'm glad you like the small basket idea, Kathy. All right. Let's show you. So not only do we have papers that come in 12 by 12, we have papers that come in 6 by 6. So the same thing. Now this is the one of the new ones from the new catalog, Bright and Beautiful. I've not written the colors down here, but I will, and I don't have which catalog this was in labeled yet. But I've already started, you know, this is open. And I'm actually in the process of making cards, so I have a little pile of these scraps over on my other table, but they will be put right in here. And then these are put in a box. Another one of those um, boxes that I just found that fits six by six. So I just watch dimensions of those clear kind of acrylic boxes that are in different stores to keep track of this. So then I keep all the six by six paper together. Then another way that I keep track of my scraps, whether it be 12 by 12 or 6 by 6, sometimes I use a certain type of designer series paper so frequently that I like to have it cut in smaller pieces right out of the gate. So this um, little set. Let me show you what the bigger case looks like. And this is one of the cases in a large case. So I believe this holder is made by a company called Iris. And it holds, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It holds 16 of these little cases, okay? And I believe this is designed for four by six photos. What this works great, think about 12 by 12 and six by six. I cut four by six pieces of paper. They fit in here perfectly. And then as I get scraps, they fit in here. And I can fit a pack of paper, usually in one of these smaller boxes. So this is an example of wood textures. And I've got different size paper in here. But there is a lot of paper in here cut. And I actually have three of these cases with all of this cut. And if I want to make a scrapbook layout, it's so easy just to pick up one of these. Or if I want to use a certain uh, designer series paper to make a set of note cards, this is really, really easy. And I like how tidy it is. And then I label the name of the um, designer series paper right on these individual little plastic um, boxes. Okay, so then with that, I don't know about you, but I forget sometimes all of the paper I have. So this is just a little recipe box, and I have little, I want to lose my spot here. 
I have just different note cards and I have the name of the designer series paper. I have all the listed coordinating colors and then I cut apart the catalog either when it's old, retired or whatever and put a, a picture of all of the paper on the back. So this is one of those things where I'm trying to do a scrapbooking project. I want to make a set of note cards for a friend. Um, I can look through without having to go dig through all my paper. I can look at this and decide what paper set I want. And then I can look at where it's located. Now, I have um, kind of continued to develop how I keep track of this. So some of them don't have the catalog uh, year, but I started doing that after I uh, got going with this and the pictures. So this um, file is actually all of the paper that I have, and it's in alphabetical order. And I just keep adding to this, and when I run out of a piece of paper, or, you know, I use it up, then I take it out of here because I don't have it anymore. So this is just another way that I am able to do my planning with my paper, is by having this little index. And then it gets down to, you know what, I don't have so much of that paper anymore, or... I am making a card and there's just a little bit of something. So then I have this old paper pumpkin box that I just throw scraps of my designer series paper in. And really, this is the box that I was using when I made all those cards this month because I have a little bit of everything in here. Sometimes I have three pieces of something. Sometimes I have one piece. You know, when I made those cards uh, using this paper, I still had scraps left, so I just put them back in this box. Oh, Sue, I'm glad that you like the ideas. I'll tell you, over time it helps, and it kind of makes um, some sense of all of my madness here. Okay, so then another thing is many times when I'm designing, I don't know how many trees I'm going to put on a card or how many cards I'm going to make. So I just have little cellophane bags that I got a long time ago. You can get these online. You know, Stampin' Up! will have different sizes in their catalog every year. And so I just put the cellophane bag with the um, things that are already die cut in with the stamps. That way when I decide I'm going to use this stamp set, maybe I can open it up. The tree's already done and my card will be done very quickly. Another one here, so you can use baggies, that Ziploc too. I decided to, I had just a little piece of cardstock left, so I went and took the um, old olive and just kept stamping all these leaves. I um, punched out, or I'm sorry, die cut some additional sunflowers and just keep it inside the stamp set and once again, I might be deciding I want to make a sunflower card. I go in here, I've got it all stamped and die cut. All I need to do is decide how I want to color it to go with um, whatever card I'm making. So that's an easy way to keep track of the die cuts that you make that match stamp sets. So then what I had shared at the... Um, last uh, Facebook Live was this binder. And so if you remember back in the day, we had these magnetic sheet binders and they were a big no-no for scrapbookers because they were not acid-free and lignin-free. And so they really changed the color of your photographs. I don't know about you, but I've had a number of photographs in those that have been discolored and I've had to take them out. I don't know if any of you have had to use dental floss to go underneath those uh, pictures to get them out of these albums. Well now this one that I just bought is actually acid and lignin free. 
but I'm not going to use it for photos. But what I do like it for is when I make two sentiments instead of one, when I'm kind of um, got the stamp out, I have an extra strip of paper, and I've just kind of put the things that are alike on one page. So these are thinking of you sentiments. This one is friendship sentiments, thank you sentiments, congratulations, hoorays together, um, best wishes, hello, just because, happy birthday, get well soon, I have sympathy ones. I have Mr. and Mrs. Happy Anniversary and Baby ones in here. I have a lot of Christmas ones. Sometimes when I'm multi uh, making a lot of different Christmas cards, I don't know how many I'm going to end up making. So I make up extra sentiments. So then um, here's some die cuts that don't have a stamp set. They're actually from Paper Pumpkin Kits. And also labels that come in my paper pumpkin kits, which are gorgeous. Um, but I'm not, I don't need them for the cards that I'm doing because I either did the cards differently or they give us sometimes extra. So I put them in here. So I have a whole bunch of witches hats and pumpkins. These lemons and pineapples. When I made the punches for that Christmas card that I just made uh, earlier this month, I just finished punching out the whole piece of paper and uh, kept the punches. Uh, many times I'll make additional labels. I'm making one, I make two, or many of these are from paper pumpkin sets. Um, you know, I'm making clouds, I make a couple extra clouds. You know, made a couple extra flowers and a dragonfly. So. This is a great way to see it, and I have to tell you, I've been doing this just a short time, but I'm using these because they are not stuck somewhere where I can't see them. So um, ah, this album was not that expensive. I don't know, probably 10 to $12 maybe, and already the utilization that I've had, it will pay for itself in no time. So... Those are some storage um, ideas. I'd like to hear your storage ideas. Um, so please share any in the comments. I would encourage you to take a picture of how you store things and add it to this post in a comment. Um, you can do that. I'm also, if you like these ideas, please share with me a thumbs up. Um, share these ideas with your family, friends, and other crafters. I would really appreciate it. And um, what a great time now as we're coming into June. Uh, Stampin' Up! just announced that for the month of June, from the 1st to the 30th, they're having a designer series paper sale, 15% off. A special um, set of designer series paper. So from the new annual catalog and then from the online exclusive um, online exclusives uh, papers. Now I will have this in my weekly email exactly which ones are in the sale and it makes a difference from like, I think it was $14 to $10 and 40 cents a packet. So that's a really nice discount if um, you're in uh, looking at papers. So let me know if I can help you. If you want to order, you can do online in my Stampin' Up! store, or you can give me a call or an email and I'd be happy to help you get your hands on these beautiful designer series paper with that great discount. And then the other thing is, talking about designer series paper, the class for um, June, and it's going to be June 13th, so it's going to be a little less than two weeks from now. I am going to do a birthday card bonanza. So just a quick peek. I'm using uh, the uh, Bright and Beautiful um, 
designer series paper to make a pop-up card. And I'm going to use some black and white paper. I believe the Zany Zoo is black and white right now. And I'm going to teach you how to make a three-page card. And then this one is using die cuts from the, um, oh gosh, the Botana, no, the, uh, the punch with flowers. I can't remember what it is. But anyway, this is a stand-up Z-fold card, and we're going to be making that one. So those are going to be on deck, so you can watch the, um, watch the, Facebook page here for the registration information. It will also be in my emails. And if you have any interest and you want to get registered, you can also email me at Tracy Rather. No, not Tracy Rather. Tracy at PlumCrazyStamping.com. And I see one of you put a question in here about punches. Right now, I stack my punches on top of a shelf where I have all my stamp sets and my punches that are whale tail or not the type that you can stack I put in a big drawer so nothing really fancy I have seen people that own whale tail punches putting them on a towel bar that they um, mount in their craft room um, so that's one way to do that I think if I find from your feedback that you like these storage ideas I will um, share more storage ideas with many of the other supplies that I have. I thought we would start with paper since I was uh, working with you and sharing all of that this month. So any other questions, I will check all of your um, feedback and questions after the broadcast. So even if you're watching this on replay, go ahead and use those comments for questions and comments. So I will be looking forward to seeing you all next Monday is going to be the paper pumpkin workshop. And I'll be doing the, um, let's see, it'll be the May kit. And then I will be um, on Facebook Live next week, Wednesday. And I'm going to be sharing uh, an online exclusive suite called Hello Irresistible. So I'm excited to share that with you as well. So I hope you had a wonderful uh, weekend as we were honoring our veterans over this last weekend. And I will look forward to seeing you this next week. And I hope you can play with your paper and your um, stamps and your ink. So happy stamping, friends. Take care. Bye-bye now.